the Visigothic invasion of Spain. This barbarian tribe went from being starving refugees to carving out their own kingdom in Iberia. And this begs the question, who were the Goths? We're not talking about mall Goths who go to Hot Topic and listen to Marilyn Manson and Corn and Slipknot. We're talking about a barbarian tribe like the Franks, the Saxons, and other Germanic groups that ended up carving up what used to be the Roman Empire in continental Europe. Now the origins of the Goths are mysterious, and there are a lot of different theories as to where they originated. It's most likely that they came from Sweden or the Baltic coast of Poland as their language is very similar to Swedish. This migratory Germanic tribe ended up being pushed into the Roman Empire by the expanding and conquering Huns. In 376 AD, the Roman Emperor Valens invited the Goths to cross the Danube River in the Balkans into the Eastern Roman Empire in the hopes of creating a military buffer between the Roman Empire and the expanding Huns. And the Goths were very much moving as refugees into the Roman Empire. And the Romans had not prepared enough food and supplies to support their new military allies in the region. And about 100,000 armed Goths ended up revolting for about two years because they were starving and needed food and supplies and they wanted a kingdom, a homeland of their own within the Roman Empire. Emperor Valens decided to give up his plans of trying to subdue the Sassanids in Persia to put down this Gothic revolt. And he was actually defeated by the Gothic leader Fritigan at the Battle of Adrianople, where Emperor Valens was actually killed in battle. In the Battle of Adrianople, signal to the Germanic tribes that Rome was weak and that migrating and taking Roman lands would be easy. The Goths and the Romans ended up crafting a peace treaty in which the Goths were given land and freedom from Roman legal structures in exchange for the Goths providing troops into the Roman army as well as giving these Germanic groups autonomy in the region. This mutually beneficial agreement will actually hold for a while. The first king of the Visigoths, Alaric, actually helped the Roman Emperor defeat other Germanic tribes. But over time, you're going to have the peace die out. The Goths still had a deep desire for a homeland that they could call their own. And after being mistreated by the Romans, later Gothic King Alaric actually marches and takes the Roman cities in Saxon in 410 AD. Being politically savvy, Alaric took the emperor's sister, Princess Placidia, and ended up persuading the Visigoths to migrate to Spain. Placidia ended up marrying Atoulf, Alaric's successor, and moved the royal palace to Barcelona. A population of about 300,000 Visigoths ended up settling in a population of about 7 million Hispano-Romans. Due to their connection to Princess Placidia, the Visigoths were viewed as more legitimate rulers as other barbarian tribes such as the Vandals who had previously taken large tracts of land in Iberia. The Visigoths were able to push the Vandals into northern Africa and quickly consolidated control over Iberia. This new Visigothic kingdom in Spain quickly became a major power in Europe that rivaled even Clovis and the Franks. And under Visigothic king Theodoric I, they actually contributed to defeating the Huns under Attila and Theodoric fell in that battle. In the Visigothic kingdom, there was a cultural blending between the Germanic Goths and the Hispano-Romans. The Visigoths under King Rekard end up converting from Arian Christianity to Roman Catholicism in 587 AD. And this religious change made the Visigoths reject the Arian Gothic Bible. And they started using the Latin Bible, thus marking the beginning of the end of the Gothic language in Spain. And we have some interesting surnames of Gothic origin that are considered traditionally Spanish to this day, such as Rodriguez, which comes from the Gothic Roderick, which was Latinized to Rodrigo, which gave us the surname Rodriguez. 
we also get another interesting cultural blend between Roman and Germanic law. The Germanic Wehrgeld, or Manworth, a price paid to recompense a crime, was blended with Roman legislation in 475 AD. Here's some examples of Visigothic art where you can see some beautiful metalwork mixed with some Roman styles. Here's an example of a Visigothic stone church that you can still find scattered throughout the Spanish countryside to this day. Despite periodic rebellions in which Visigothic nobles ended up rising up against the king, this kingdom was able to bring relative stability and prosperity to Iberia. Over time, you actually have Sevilla in southern Spain become an intellectual center of Roman and Gothic learning in which they not only preserve but also build upon the accumulated knowledge of the classical Roman world. And we'll see that Sevilla and Visigothic Spain will actually provide some of the intellectual and ruling foundations for later the Islamic Empire that takes over Spain. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think and I will catch you on the next one.